Hi guys, and welcome back to another draft on my channel. So, I'm sure, guessing the title, or with the title that I'll probably put in the video, you'll be able to guess who the main player of this draft is. But, we'll get on to him later in the draft. So, as for now, starting off, we get Andrew Luck as a pit. Love him a score back in this game. Very well-rounded quarterback. He's good at pretty much everything. So, I'll lock down the quarterback slot early on with Andrew Luck. Moving into this pick here, all pretty good picks, but I'm going to go with Eddie Royal. Just, I love the campus players in this game. I think they're so, they play so much better than what their ratings actually say. This pick here, once again, all positions we need since we're just starting off the draft. But I'm going to go with Aloka because whenever I put him at strong safety, he seems to just make plays for me. Because I go zone coverage and his zone coverage is so high. Alex Boone there as well, getting a good right guard in the team, obviously. He's an absolutely phenomenal right guard, being 94 rated, a movers card as well, where they bump up the stats. Trey Mason as well, really good little running back there. Nice, he can hit the gaps that the linemen inevitably will make with this pick. So we get two right guards, obviously not going to go with them because we already have one. So I'm going to go with the right tackle in Beluga there. And we're going to get Trey Mason to run to the right a lot during this draft because they're going to make holes for him to just nip through. And hopefully we'll be able to score some nice touchdowns with that. But here we go with the Luke Keekley pick. That 99 card, just look how phenomenal that card actually is. It, I mean, you very rarely even see him on the auction block. So I'm hoping to get some good play game playing with him. So if any of you guys have thought about picking him up when he does actually rarely appear on the auction block, you'll be able to sort of judge how well he'll play. I'm going to go with uh, Halley here as well. Get a good linebacker in there. I mean, all of these are positions we have pretty much. So I'm going to go with the defensive tackle. Just lock up the line a bit since we didn't have many linemen yet. Once again, more defensive picks, which is what I like to see because obviously if I want to get Luke Keekley involved, if I have good defense, then he'll be involved in a lot of the game because they'll probably be chucking it over the middle to him since my linemen will get in quickly. And hopefully he'll make some plays for us. But this pick here, very... Very hard pick for me. I love the Eloka card, like I said earlier. It was his upgraded one, but I've already got one in. So I'm going to go with Armstead, and we can put one of those guys at right end, or or even at just a defensive tackle. Get Rogers in there. Very nice tight ends. And with the legend pick, to be honest, it's not the best legend round. I mean, the main reason I'm uploading this draft, like I said, is for the 99 Luke Keekley, which is... I, I've never seen him used on YouTube, to be honest, personally anyway. But... This might be the first time he's been used. We get a nice 84 generic overall team. I'll do a little overview of the team here so you can see who we actually ended up getting in the end. We've got good wide receiver options. We've got Sammy Coates in there as well, who is very underrated. An absolutely insane card. But there is the main man, Luke Keekley, 99. Just look at them stats on the right. He's got nearly 100 in everything. He's high 90s for everything at the very least. But I'll jump into a few game replays with Luke Keekley just to show how well he actually performs in the draft and jumping into this game here this is just a textbook showing of how well the defense can play and i think like the commentators were actually saying while i was playing luke Heakley is the quarterback of any defense because he just controls everything like in real life and in the game here like you can see i'm not going to use him i want him to play you know just play his natural game and as you can see he's got most things he's always in and around the play because of his 99 play rec he's he just knows where the ball's going to be most of the time luckily there we managed to get a stop force this guy to third and 10 early on and you know i'm just leaving keekley to do his thing and if you just watch him throughout every play he is such a good card for you always where he should be and always reading the play pretty well luckily we get another stop there force this guy to pump and to be honest, he knew he wasn't getting anywhere in this game. So he actually decided just to quit on me. So I'll jump into another replay with a little bit more Luke Kickley gameplay. But if you guys are enjoying the video up to this point, smash a like on the like button. Let's try and get 15 likes. Comment down below if you're excited to see a 99 Luke Kickley card. Because I definitely was when, when it popped up. I was, you know, really excited to see a card that good. And subscribe if you are new. But moving into the second game in this video, I'm not going to include all the draft games because some of them just, they don't have any good highlights to actually put in or people quit out insanely early on. But, you know, we, we're sacking this guy early on. Nothing open for him. I'm just loving this defence on this team, to be honest. I mean, I, all I was doing this 
gameplay was user in the lineman because I didn't want to use her or risk user in Keekly whatsoever and just let him do his thing and hopefully make some place for us on the ball. But this guy goes for a lob deep. He went for the... I was not sure why you go for fourth and 20 first play of the game or first drive of the game, but he did. It didn't work out for him. Luckily, we get a nice stop and we get Richard Rogers in there making a really nice grab. Love having a big tall tight end there. And Andrew Luck. I don't think Andrew Luck threw one bad throw in this entire draft. So I'm having sort of a really good time using Andrew Luck at the moment. And he seems to pop up in every draft I do. So can't complain about that. But I see the right-hand side's pretty open there. We get a really nice block there. Trey Mason, I probably could have cut to the right, and we probably probably would have got a touchdown there if I just played that a little bit better. But I'm going to take the easy yards and just try and... Since we didn't start with the ball, if I score first, I'm always happy no matter how it happens. We managed to get to the one-yard line there. Really nice throw from Andrew Luck. And since he's been throwing absolutely perfectly, I'm going to reward him with a touchdown. We QB sneak in, get a nice lead early on in this game. It's only about halfway through the first quarter as well. And we've already we've already managed to make him turn the ball over and get a score ourselves. But as you can see, defence is pretty much locked up. I'm just going coverage most of the game. And that isn't the best highlight of Keekly there. But that's not one of his insane strengths. He's not the fastest middle linebacker in the game. But if you can pick the right play most of the time, he will be in the right spot where he should be 99% of the time. And there's a few plays coming up that you'll see that if I don't actually mention it uh, as I'm talking over, if you just watch him, where he's going and all things like that, you'll see the amount of plays he does actually make. And I'm so, so excited to use him during this draft. But this guy's going to try and run the ball. We lock that up pretty nicely. And all I'm doing is just going coverage because he didn't tend to run the ball too much, this guy. And if they don't tend to run too much, I'm just going to try and just go cover two man and see how it plays out until they start beating it consistently. And that's a nice rollout from him there. Pretty disappointed we didn't get a fumble because it's RG3 and, you know, he's not known for holding on to big hits like that. We managed to get a hit stick, a high up hit stick, and he managed to hold on to it, which is pretty lucky, I think. But he's going in the formation that people tend to do a halfback toss him. And as you can see over the middle here, I just overrun it a little bit. My user in wasn't the best there. I just overrun it. I didn't manage to get a pat down or anything. And he gets it in for a nice, easy score for him. But going on here, I know I need to do is just slowly drive my way up the field. And we're managing to do that. So all I'm doing is I'm just trying to get different plays in. But to be honest, I'm mainly abusing over the middle because he left it open most of the game. I mean, if it's open, I'm going to try and get some different plays in for you guys. But... I mean, when you can get a nice easy score like I did there, there's no reason not to go for that. And I'm not sure why he went with this play. I mean, I'd the le my left-hand side was overloaded with people, and he still ran it there, and we managed to get a nice stop on him. So he's second and eight because I got a flag because I he fake snapped it and I jumped, so he got a five five yard move forward. And second and eight, and I'm not sure what this guy's about at this point. He actually went with the half-back toss that side again, but as you can see, Keekly gets a really good block shed and runs straight in, and that saved me on that play, to be honest. I mean, that's the type of player he was. He was just, his block shed in is phenomenal. Um, like, he's just one of them players that plays really well, sort of that way. That should have been a pick there. Pretty unfortunate it wasn't, but then I misplayed by bringing the corner forward, but I knew I needed to shut him down, otherwise he'd get the easy first down. So I went with a risk, and he got very unlucky there. Like, I think... That was really close to being him. And he's coming towards the end of the second quarter. I should have just played conservatively, taken a field goal, got a two-possession lead, but I decided to lob it up in triple coverage, which isn't the smartest thing to do in the world, but I thought uh, Reed would come up with a catch there. Unfortunately, he didn't. And now this guy, 17 seconds is more than enough time to score. So he's going to bomb one deep. He's going to roll out here, and he makes a really nice read. Like, as you can see there, he had the legs on me, and he gets in. So it goes from being a two-possession lead to being even in the game, which is awful from me. But I have five seconds left. I have time for one more play, and I'm just going to send people deep. And luckily, Sammy Coates comes up big for us over the middle here. And luckily, again, he is quick enough to just make it into the end zone and just outrun his players. I think if it was 10 more yards, he would have got caught. 
But this is something I actually wanted to ask you guys. Let me know down below in the comments about this. Do you think sort of onside kicks should be obvious for both teams, whether it's going to be an onside kick or not? Because I think that takes the point out of an onside kick, really. Because if you can see it coming, it's really easy to defend. It's like, it rarely works anyway, don't get me wrong. But I think if you know it's coming, it takes away the point of having an onside kick. Anyway, moving back into the highlights of the game, we're going to try and slowly drive our way forward. I just want to make it a two-possession game. If I'm in a two-possession game, I'm a lot more comfortable in the game, and I can just play my game a lot easier. And thankfully, at this point, we managed to get him for a touchdown. My guy there actually pointing at the receiver, uh, at the defender, showing him who's boss, and we get in, and we're two scores up in the game. But my opponent here, he didn't give up. Fair play to him. He kept going throughout the whole game, which is why we got a lot of nice highlights in for you guys. So smash a like on the like button for that. But I couldn't get a good defense against him either. I mean, I was locking him up sometimes, but sometimes he was just making good reads and there was nothing I could do about it. But we got a sack there, second and 19. He's going to go hurry up. I didn't personally notice anything really open then, but if something was, I'm going to change up my defense a little bit. Just go cover two man, just so he doesn't get anything open that he may have before relied on and he peels out nicely there since he had rg3 i should have put a qb spy in the game a lot more often i know that but to be honest i was just enjoying the game and i didn't want keekley's gameplay to change whatsoever i thought i'd just leave him to do his own thing and make the plays that he should have been making and we get a nice little knockdown there on the play forcing to fourth and 10 it's a big play for him this one he needs to get it and he's going to have a play action. I thought he was going with a run there. But he's got a few players open. And he's going to go with one that wasn't actually open. But fair play to him coming up the catch. That happens a lot in draft champions. It's just something you have to deal with a lot of the time. And I really didn't expect him to run this. Because he was barely running all game. And we actually pull him into the end zone. He gets tackled by three people. And we pull him straight into the end zone. For a nice easy score on his part. It wasn't the hardest drive. He just had to make two big passes. And a nice simple run in. But like I said earlier, over the middle was just open. And I don't see any reason not to just abuse throwing it over the middle when it's open most of the game. But I'm trying to mix it up a little bit for you guys. I'll get a few runs in because I didn't run it with Trey Mason much. I was just going to fall back dive it here and there where I can. Because as you can see, I think he's going cover three or cover four in this play. And we should be able to get in. But he manages to just run straight through the line. And we're going to try and try that again. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. As you can see, he's got a lot of guys in coverage, so he's not expecting the run for some reason, even though that formation almost 90% of the time ends up being a run up the middle or a toss. And since we've run up the middle twice in a row, he's going to gamble on that. He moves one of his guys from the right over to the left, which is lucky for us. We get a really good pancake block in there. And we're going to celebrate into the end zone. And coming up to the end of the game, it's a two-possession game really comfortable at this point i know he's gonna to have to try and bomb it deep so i'm just gonna go three man deep i mean he can pick up a few yards here and there i'm fine with that but if he has to waste his timeouts on his offense we win the game anyway and we end up getting a really pick nice pick picks. like i said at the start eloka just gets picks for me all the time he's one of my favorite safeties in the game and i don't know what it is but he just plays absolutely phenomenally for me like a a few other you know, I'm sure you, you guys have affiliation to players that aren't high rated or anything. They just play really well. But coming towards the end of the game, we could have got another touchdown here. But my guy actually ends up quitting out of the game. So if you guys have enjoyed the video, smash like on the like button. Comment down below if you enjoyed the gameplay with the 99 campus hero Luke Keekley. Subscribe if you're new because I'll be sending out a lot of draft videos soon. And thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another video.